Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's September 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks again on the rise this week. It's been another good week for the stocks of waste, gas, and energy. And as of September 8th, 2023, Vanguard ESG Energy is up to trading at a volume of 44,508. Atlantica Sustainable is at 80,328. Waste Management is now up to a volume of 228,430. Clean Energy Core is up to a volume of 277,599, and Chenier Energy is currently trading at a volume of 437,545. But moving into the news, an exciting study coming out of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, where a team of researchers have been able to use E. coli bacteria to generate electricity from wastewater. E. coli, a staple of biological research, have been harnessed to create electricity through a process known as extracellular electron transfer. Professor Artemis Bokhazian, who led the team, said, quote, Though there are exotic microbes that naturally produce electricity, they can only do so in the presence of specific chemicals. E. coli can grow on a wide range of sources, which allows us to produce electricity in a wide range of environments, including from wastewater. End quote. This coming from the journal Juul and their published paper, Extracellular Electron Transfer Pathways to Enhance the Electroactivity of Modified E. coli. But on the subject of potentially industry-changing studies, another paper, this one coming out of Michigan State University, shows how salt could actually be the future of plastics recycling. Written by Professor Mohamed Rabnawaz, recently inducted into the National Academy of Inventors, the paper itself, titled Revolutionizing Plastic Chemical Recycling with Table Salt, shows how the common condiment can be instrumental in pyrolysis, the process that breaks down plastics into a mix of simpler carbon-based compounds, which manifests in the form of gas, liquid oil, and solid wax. Professor Rabnawaz calls his findings, quote, really exciting and says, quote, we need simple, low-cost solutions to take on a big problem like plastics recycling, end quote. But moving forward, Danone North America has joined the Farm Powered Strategic Alliance, a movement founded by Vanguard Renewables, which aims to promote regenerative agriculture and prevent food waste by turning it into renewable energy. The alliance was formed back in 2020 by Vanguard, Unilever, Starbucks, and the Dairy Farmers of America in order to boost food waste recycling, expand renewable energy across the U.S., and support generational farms and regenerative agricultural practices. Practices. Neil Smith, the CEO of Vanguard, said, quote, Danone's decision to join the Farm Powered Strategic Alliance is a testament to their dedication to sustainability and their recognition of the urgent need to address food waste and renewable energy challenges, end quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, industry-leading experts in the field of gas analysis and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com, that's diamondsci.com, or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. And going back to wastewater for a moment, San Luis Obispo County in California is now monitoring wastewater to track COVID trends. Wastewater sampling has been used nationally since the 1970s as a way to identify levels of infection within communities. Now it's becoming fairly widely used to detect the virus of COVID-19, including on the California coast. SLO County epidemiologist Jesse Burmester said it's when an asymptomatic or symptomatic individual uses the toilet, a shower, or sink, or anything that leads to a wastewater facility or sewage system, and from there, samples can get pulled, end quote. 
And moving up to the northwest, Metro, the elected regional government charged with managing solid waste in Oregon and Washington, is developing a new garbage and recycling systems facility plant to increase access to disposal services in the Tri-County area. The Metro Council will hear from a panel of experts about new innovations later this month and expects to approve the plan in November. By coincidence, whatever Metro decides, construction has just started on a new facility that could help the region with one of its greatest challenges, diverting more food waste out of landfills. Divert Inc., a national environmental technology company, broke ground September 6th on an industrial-sized anaerobic digester that will convert food waste into renewable natural gas. Called an integrated diversion and energy facility, it is being built in Longview, Washington, and anticipates processing 100,000 tons of food waste a year from Oregon and Washington when it's completed next year. And lastly, moving from Washington to Washington, D.C., after years of studying and discussing the idea of launching a curbside composting program, D.C. officials finally began rolling out a pilot program this month. Roughly 9,000 households will be participating, getting food scraps picked up once a week and a bag of finished compost at the end of the program. The pilot program was initially supposed to start this past spring, but according to Rachel Manning, a spokesperson with the Department of Public Waste, the department did not sign a contract with the companies that will do the food scrap pilot program collection until this past July. She said truck driver shortages have also delayed delivery of supplies needed for the program. Each household in the program will receive a five-gallon bucket with a screw-on lid, a kitchen food scrap tote, and a package of compostable bags. Manning said the rolling launch will allow the program to get started as materials arrive rather than delaying the entire program even further until everything is ready. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for September 8th, 2023, brought to you by Diamond Scientific. Once again, I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back here next Friday for a brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.